When I was planning to do my review for this movie, Ginger Snaps, I wasn't entirely sure whether or not to include the genre of this movie in the review itself, because there are certain films this one, for instance, Let the Right One In, is another perfect example where I like to try and avoid telling people the genre sometimes because it can be that much more of a surprise, a pleasant surprise, when you actually go in and watch the film. Now, in the case of this one, I've ultimately decided to include genre in the review purely because unlike Let the Right One In, which has a really, really strong reputation, Ginger Snaps, not so much. It's no way near as talked about, from what I've seen at least, it's a cult classic for sure, but it doesn't have the same level of respect that something like Let the Right One In does, at least for the most part. So with that in mind, I think that there are probably a few people who wouldn't watch this movie unless they know what the genre actually is. Because when you look at the film, it looks to be a coming-of-age high school movie about two goth sisters. And that doesn't really sound like an enticing horror concept for most people at least. It certainly wouldn't for me. I'm not a huge fan of coming-of-age films unless it's used creatively, such as for horror. And on this occasion, it is. Because, and this is the crucial thing, it's a werewolf movie. And although you could view that as a spoiler, and apologies for those who do view that as a spoiler, the genre overall, I think that it is important to say that for this one, because many people probably wouldn't be inclined to check it out unless they knew something like that. So with that in mind, and I did allude to this movie in my Dog Soldiers review anyway, I would say that this is actually one of my favourite examples of the werewolf genre done well, and also crucially done differently. And that is actually one of the primary reasons why I do like Dog Soldiers so much, because it is different. It feels fresh, it has that alternative approach to the werewolf genre, because as I alluded to in that review, I'm not a huge werewolf fan when it comes to movies. I like the concept of the creature, but it's just never fully explored in terms of the kind of gore, the kind of true horror, the kind of on-screen presence that a lot of other monsters have. Stuff like Frankenstein's vampires, or Frankenstein's monster vampires, that kind of stuff. And that's a shame, because the werewolf has a ton of opportunities to make a crazy, awesome-looking creature, and as, again, I mentioned briefly, I think it was in my Dog Soldiers breakdown, there are only a few movies which actually show the werewolf action. It tends to just be a few seconds or a few minutes of a centerpiece of the movie where you'll see a character change into a werewolf. You can probably think of some, for instance, like an American werewolf in London, one of the best examples. Uh, Wolf has some, but not to the same degree. The Howling, of course, as well. But it's usually just a few brief moments. In this movie, it's more than that. And in Dog Soldiers, even more so than in this one, because, of course, that one's a full-on action horror, alien style, whereas this one is, as I alluded to earlier on, a coming-of-age werewolf movie, because it is about two gothic sisters who don't fit in at school, they are perfectly fine with that, they enjoy being different, their pastime is thinking about how they'll die together in various grotesque ways, but then one of the sisters does get attacked by a werewolf. They don't realise what it is at the time, but she begins to change. Not physically, at least not visually. She begins to change emotionally first, and her personality becoming more confident. And over the course of the film, that is how it really, I would say, excellently combines the horror aspects of that transformation with the coming-of-age social side of it. Because on the one hand, she's becoming more aggressive, but on the other hand, she's becoming more confident and more light, which she didn't realise she would actually enjoy that kind of attention. So it's an interesting difference to the kind of character depth that you'd usually see in a werewolf film. It tends to be uh, an adult who it happens to, a male more often than not. So this is different in a number of ways, and I actually found it very fresh. It was a totally new approach. So as far as the story goes, I would say that's pretty much all you need to know. It's a coming-of-age werewolf movie about two sisters and also how it puts a strain on their relationship. And I think for what it was going out to do, it did it very well. It manages to, I think as well, age quite well also, because it's easy for a movie like this to not age well at all. The humour, for instance, the music. But I think it actually did. It, it holds up pretty well, actually, very well for me personally. Now, as far as the scores for this particular film, well, first of all, for the story and plot, I'm actually going to give it a 7 out of 10, and the reason why I'm going so high on that, because, don't get me wrong, it's not some mind-blowing, groundbreaking movie necessarily, although you could, I guess, view it that way in some ways, 
It's more so that it wasn't just different, and the fact that it is different is a great help towards that score, but it's different and it's justified in being different. It makes good use of the way that it uses the werewolf lore and the way that it ties it into the kind of character development which is, let's be honest, usually the focus of the vast majority of werewolf movies, but it feels more interesting to me in this one because most others do follow such similar beats. This one doesn't, and although it has the same kind of character transformation, it's done to a different kind of character, and it manifests itself in a slightly different way, sometimes a very different way. You've got side characters and side stories that tie inherently into it as well, and even the supporting cast and characters, there are some who are kind of dumb, the mother character in the movie is a little bit silly, but even she gets the chance to actually have some input and be relevant to the story. So across the board, I like the characters as well. Now as far as my score for the characters, I'm actually going to give it another 7. So it's looking pretty good so far, those are two healthy scores. And as I said, I like the characters. The two main sisters in particular have great chemistry, be it positive or negative. They're interesting characters. You'll probably recognise some faces in the film, younger actors in particular who went on to do other things. The adult side of things are played a bit more for the goofy side of things, whereas the kids are the focus of the film, but that's not too surprising for a coming of age kind of movie, that tends to be the case, especially when you're talking about school teachers, that kind of stuff. But across the board, I like the characters in this one. There are some characters who are much more important to the plot than you might initially expect them to be, given the type of character that they are. Usually comedy, comic relief, for instance. In this one, they're not, they're a main character. As far as the visuals, and of course in a movie like this that will always include the effects, the makeup, that kind of thing, well I'm actually going to keep the streak alive with another 7. Because as I mentioned earlier, a lot of werewolf movies, I would say stray too far into the sometimes brilliant use of not showing the audience enough. Because it's one thing to keep you guessing, like Alien does for instance, but the key is, Alien does give you the payoff. You do get to see enough of the creature to get a good idea of what it actually looks like. Whereas with most werewolf movies, they never give you a good look. Which is why I like ones like Ginger Snaps and Dog Soldiers so much, because it's more than just seeing a paw here, or a snout there, or a, an ear over here, or someone's hairy back, which is kind of the cliched stuff to show, whereas this goes further than that. You do see full creature transformations. So I like that. And plus the creature design is great, because I hate it when a werewolf movie such as Wolf, for instance, which I think is great from the Jack Nicholson point of view, but kind of falls short on the other aspects of the film, he turns into an actual wolf, and the other werewolves are actual wolves. To me, that's not very interesting. It's cool, but it's kind of not at the same time. You've got this opportunity to make a truly grotesque, awesome-looking monster, and then you just turn him into an actual wolf. It's just not as interesting to me. Whereas Dog Soldiers, this movie, it goes more extreme with the kind of werewolf action that you can have, especially with this one. If this kind of werewolf in this movie was what the ones in Dog Soldiers look like, the tone of that film would be significantly different. It could still be cheesy and over the top, but it would be a lot more creepy, because this is one of the creepiest werewolf designs I've seen in a movie, and I loved it for that. What then about the audio side of things? The music, the soundtrack, the sound design? Well, for that I'm going to give it a 6, which might sound bad compared to the 7s, but the reason why is because, as with many films, it didn't blow me away, it just did its job. It was above par, I wouldn't say that it was underwhelming, the music is good enough, the sound design is good enough, the special effects are good enough when it comes to audio, enough to be above par for me basically, but as I'll often say, nothing to really blow your mind, it just does its job. And that's good enough. And finally for, of course, the most open-ended of the five categories, the rewatchability and entertainment factor. But for that, I'm actually going to give it another 7 because for me, it's got a lot of rewatchability. The runtime is not overly long. You can, for instance, watch some parts of the movie on maybe 1.5 times speed if you wanted to, and you won't lose that much. Scenes of small talk or going from place to place, you could skip or fast forward. But even if you don't, the film doesn't drag. It's got pretty good pacing. Not perfect, but pretty good. 
and it's got pretty much everything that you want from a werewolf movie combined with things that you didn't necessarily know you wanted, like having these younger female characters in the predicament rather than, say, the cliched college guy, like in An American Werewolf in London or a businessman in The Wolf, etc. It's different, and it's justified in being different. It actually makes good use of it. And overall, as a tabulation of all five of those categories put together, I'm giving Ginger Snaps a pretty decent score of 3.4 out of 5, which of course works out to a 6.8 out of 10. So, pretty healthy score, not amazingly high, but that's pretty much where it should fall for me. It's not one of my absolute favourite horror movies overall, but I would definitely say it's one of my favourite within the subcategory of werewolf films. I think I'll probably give the edge to Dog Soldiers overall, because it goes all in on the action and the silliness and embraces it, whereas this one, it's a little bit more serious and it has more of a drama edge to it, and of course that's where the coming of age comes in, in a story like this, and it works well. It's entirely justified. And I would actually recommend potentially a double bill of those two movies for two werewolf films, but with two very different approaches to it, just to, maybe if you're a little bit hazy on the genre as I was becoming, It'll reinvigorate your love for it. It'll show you what can be done with the werewolf genre when you actually put more effort in. And I think that both of those movies are a good example of that. So overall, definitely check this one out if you want to be more of a fan of the werewolf genre, or if you already are one, and by some chance haven't seen it. But that's it for this pick overall. Of course, I'll see you guys next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.